Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God's Love School. So I'll explain a bit of a vision I've had recently, and then try to share some of the things God's teaching me about love lately. So it's like I uh, look at the internet in my bedroom. And it's like I start to get a vision when I was looking at uh, the internet screen or something. And the vision was of Jesus in my living room sitting on the couch or something. And it's like he was saying to me, um, I'm in here, Rod. <laughs> uh, I want to spend time with you. What do you do? And uh, I'm like, well, I'm searching for information off the internet or something from prophets and from alternative news sites and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's like Jesus saying, uh, I'm lonely or something. Come be with me. It's almost like saying, Rod, will you shut that stuff off and come into the living room and be close to me? It says in the Bible, if we seek for God with all of our heart, we'll find him. <laughs> it's like we, we're not supposed to have a divided heart, loving the things of the world more than God. It's like the th things we talk about most are the things that we love the most. <laughs> Is it Jesus? Is it God? Is it the things of the world? And it's almost like Satan saying, uh, the internet's more important than Jesus. And you're believing in it. So it's like, uh, it's like when I was discipling a, a teenager one time, they would say to me, well, what you say seems so easy. You just say, God, give me joy, and you got joy or something. <laughs> or um, get rid of my fear, help me to be bold, it's easy or something. And what I try to explain to them why it's so hard to get saved or to love God with all their heart, how to have a fullness of joy or something, why it's difficult to do that, all I can come up with is whenever you try to do what God wants you to do, Satan tries to stop you. Stuff. It's like Adam and Eve. God wanted to have this awesome, loving relationship with Adam and Eve in paradise here on earth. And Satan tried to stop them. We're supposed to be trying to have a great, awesome, loving relationship with God here on earth now, but Satan tries to stop us. That's more important than Jesus. Look, what's going on on the internet or something? You don't have time to pray. You're too busy surfing for stuff on the internet. <laughs> We gotta be able to pray and obey. We gotta be able to draw close to God. My sheep hear my voice. Do what Jesus is telling us to do. It's like going to Jesus and saying, well, what do you want, Jesus? Get an answer back. I want you to love me with all of your heart. I want you to draw close to me. I want to be close to you. That's the whole reason he died on the cross. Try to get us close to him. Try to get a loving him with all our heart relationship going. So it's like that's what the world is about. It's like a God's love school. And the more we want to excel in our love lessons from God, the more successful we'll be. The whole the whole way to success is to obey the greatest commandments yeah, to love God with all your heart your mind and soul and strength and to love other people like God loves you and Satan's tried to stop us from doing that he tried to stop Eve from doing that <laughs> and so when like I counsel people why is it so difficult we're in a spiritual war you haven't learned spiritual warfare yet and you don't know the truth to set you free yet or something it's like Trying to understand how demons can cause negative thinking or how demons can stop us from thinking that God loves us with all of his heart or something. It's like when we start to get saved, God wants us to get into his word and let him teach us about 
how love lessons, how to love them with all of our heart. That's the goal in life for success. If we could do that, obey the greatest commandment with God's help to obey the greatest commandment, we'd be successful in this life. It's like Moses, God trying to speak through Moses. Moses is telling the parents, train up your kids in the ways of God. Teach them his truth. Moses was trying to say, if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you'll be successful in this world. We're still under the same plan of God or something. Father God's saying, I want them to love me. Jesus is saying, I want them to love me. I gave them a free will choice. I'm not going to force them. If they want to be like Adam and Eve listening to Satan. They won't love me. And it'll hurt them. It's like King David uh, starting to grow cold in his love for God and starting to love the creation like Bathsheba more than God or something. Like Jesus said, if you love your husband or your wife or your parents or your children more than me, you're not worthy of me. First, we've got to love God with all our heart. Then this kind of love can spill over onto other human beings or something like that. Not love the human beings more than God and forget about God or something, which Satan tries to get us to do. So we got to go back to the Garden of Eden. We've got to understand that it's hard for us to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because we're in a spiritual war, most people are losing it and don't understand it. But God can teach us about it. God's a good spiritual warfare teacher. Go back to the Garden of Eden. Go to Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. I'll teach you about spiritual warfare. So that we're not deceived by the devil. We recognize them, we resist them and fight them off. It's like a love test or whatever. Love the world, Rod. And then you got God on the other side, love me more than the world. And we're deciding Satan's way to success or God's way to success. Loving ourselves in the world or loving God more than the things of the world. Being like uh, Eve, listening to Satan, following Satan, forsaking God or whatever. Or like Paul, listening to God, seeking to love God with all his heart. Or the disciples, our example to follow. So that's what Moses was saying. Uh, if you want success in life, learn to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus came and said the same thing. What's the greatest commandment, Jesus? Love God with all your heart. Teach that to your kids. And then when your kids get older, they can teach it to their kids. Disciple making in the family. Disciple making in the church. One of the prayers that Paul prayed was, I pray that people's eyes could be opened to how great God's love is for them. So it's difficult for us to understand how much God loves us or to want to love him back with all our heart. If we got Satan telling us, don't believe that stuff. Don't believe God is real. Don't believe he loves you. Don't seek his help to overcome your sinful flesh nature that just wants to love yourself. Don't be filled with the Holy Spirit's love for God. Or don't say, God, I'm not loving you with all my heart. Help me to do it type stuff and get empowered, anointing to love God with all your heart. Make that most important in your mind. What's my goal today? Love Jesus with all my heart or Father God. And to fight off Satan trying to stop me. So that's what God wanted to do. He wanted Adam and Eve to say, No, Satan, I love God more than the creation. <laughs> he wants us to say, No, Satan, I love God more than the creation. So it's like we got Satan coming to us saying, Either God's not real or God doesn't love us, creating all this negative thoughts in our mind. God doesn't love me. Uh, God's not real or something. If we believe those lies. But if we learn from God that he is real, revealing himself to us, helping us through the troubles of life, then we can start to fight Satan off. No, God is real. Go away, Satan. Satan tries to say something like, when we hear God's truth, that's not true, don't believe that. You don't need to get saved. You don't need to love God with all your heart. There is no hell. There's no judgment coming on the wicked soon. But uh, that's going to be our safety. When God's punishing the wicked in the future, like the days of Noah, only having a good loving relationship with God is going to protect you in that. Like it protected Noah in that. So, if we want to 
be successful, learn how to love God with all our heart, then we got to seek God's help to do that because we can't do it ourselves. It's like we've got to ask a question to God and get an answer back. It says in James 1 verse 5, if we lack wisdom, ask God for it. The questions we need to ask God are, how much do you love me, Father God, and get an answer back? How much do you love me, Jesus, and get an answer back? We're not going to love God with all of our heart till we first understand him loving us with all of his heart. Father God will say, hey, I had an awesome relationship with my son Jesus in heaven. I had to let him to come down to earth and be humbled from being the God of the universe and stuff like that and suffer and die on a cross just because I wanted to get my message down here to you through him. That I love you so much I gave my son for you, like John 3, 16 or whatever. This has to become a revelation in our mind, not just some words on a page. But Father God saying it to us, like God talking to Moses by a burning bush or Paul on the road to Damascus. I love you so much I gave my son for you to suffer for you so that we might have a love relationship together like a good child with a perfect father. And asking Jesus the question, how much do you love me, Jesus? And getting an answer back. Well, I left my kingship in heaven to come down to earth and be um, attacked by wicked people and stuff like that and crucified. Why? Because I love you so much and I want to be so close to you and I want to marry you forever and stuff like that. Then, like the Bible says, we love God because he first loved us. Unless we understand how much God loves us with all of his heart, we're not going to love him back with all of our heart. And that comes through truth knowledge. It's like when you know the truth, how much God loves you. When you know the truth, God can help you to love him back with his Holy Spirit's power and love. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost or something. Then we can start to have these feelings that, wow, God loves me so much and I want to love him back. Forget the internet. Forget the things of this world or something. I want Jesus. I want the Father. I want that kind of relationship Adam and Eve had before the fall, which can be. We can experience spiritually. God can reconcile us to himself <laughs> through the blood of his son Jesus on the cross. It's all this loving blood. It's a loving cross. It's a loving Father. It's a loving Jesus. So that we can fulfill what Moses was telling the people to do. Love God with all your heart, your mind, soul, and strength. Teach that to your children from an early age. The, the church is supposed to be people having this awesome, loving relationship with God that's spilling over on everybody else. Jesus, the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Or like Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love others like I love you. So if we understand how much Jesus loves us, then this kind of love can start to pour out on to others, even our enemies. It's all about love, really. First Corinthians 13 says, the greatest thing is love. Love is not selfish. God is love. But you don't see too many people getting that knowledge. Instead, you get them listening to Satan saying, love's not important. Obeying God's not very important. <laughs> Jesus said, if you love me, I'll obey. So we got to get this understanding of how much God loves us, asking Father God, how much do you love me? Asking Jesus, how much do you love me? Getting an answer back. I gave my son for you. I died on the cross for you. It's like uh, no human being has died on the cross for me, but Jesus did. Nobody else gave me their son because they wanted to be close to me so much, but Father God did that stuff. So it's a bit like a prodigal son story. It's like Father God's waiting for people to believe the truth. Father God's is waiting for people to believe how much he loves them. Or let him reveal how much he loves them. God's love school, God's love lessons, etc. It's all there if we want to look at it. If I'm going out to the front room to talk to Jesus, he's going to have nail-scarred hands. I love you this much, Rod. It's like uh, sometimes I get a vision of Jesus with his arm around me 
kind of walking around like a husband and bride or something like that. And it just feels so good. Somebody wants to be close to me. Somebody loves me that much. It's like, um, well, it's like we try to find love from human beings on earth. We don't find a whole lot or something. Unless they got a really loving relationship with God, we can't feel the Holy Spirit loving us through them. It's like in a marriage relationship. God would like husbands to be filled with his Holy Spirit's love, loving the wife. And uh, he wants the wife to be filled with God's love, loving the husband. And this is supernatural power to love in a marriage relationship and to be sort of like an example of what we're supposed to be doing with God type thing. Fervent first love, bridal love. It's really hard to find good teachings on uh, this intense loving God with all our heart knowledge from the Bible. That's what I suppose. The only person I ever got some knowledge from this about was somebody who was like a Roman Catholic nun or something back in World War II. Her name was Mother Basalia Schlink and she wrote books about bridal love and God spoke to me through it. <laughs> and so I've been trying to understand it more during my lifetime. It'd be nice if my parents taught me this stuff from an early age or uh, churches taught me this stuff growing up or something. But they didn't. <laughs> they didn't know what it was or something. It's like they're half in the world and half in the spiritual realm with God or something. They love the world half. They love God half. It's like a divided heart. And uh, they teach you to be like them. you got to go beyond that you got to get this fervent love for God, like a first love between a bride and her husband or that is continuous like that. It doesn't fade. The, the marriage relationship on earth is supposed to be an example of what our relationship with God is supposed to be like. If it was perfect, if it was filled with uh, unselfish suffering love and stuff. Like we see God displaying for us. It's, it was suffering for Father to give his son. The king of the universe to come down to this earth and suffer and die at the hands of wicked people and Satan in them and stuff. It was hard for Jesus to do that. Like it talks about in Philippians that he humbled himself, became obedient to God even to the point of death. Humbled himself. I'll show my creation how much I love them. I'll die on the cross for them. I'll show my creation how much I love them. I'll give my son for them. We need revelations of that if we're ever going to be able to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Like he loves us with all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. It took Jesus' everything to die on that cross in a humble way. But he knew the good it could produce. It's like Joseph going through suffering. This is to save many people's lives, this suffering. If we're going through suffering, praying for people, fasting. Uh, with me, I got back pain. It's suffering to do things and experience a lot of back pain. But if Jesus is saying do it, you do it. Because God likes suffering love. The thing he's going to reward the most in heaven is suffering love. Not just easy love or whatever, suffering love. Take up your cross like I take up my cross. Love in a suffering way like I love in a suffering way is what God's trying to say to us. But he's like a prodigal father. He's not going to force us. He gave us a free will choice. You can't have love without a free will choice. You can choose to get saved. You can choose not to be saved anymore if you want to. <laughs> God's not going to force you to have faith and never get saved. The Bible says in, I think it's Second Chronicles, the Lord is with you while you are with him, but if you forsake him, he'll forsake you. The Bible says he'll never leave us or forsake us. If we don't want to forsake him, but if we want to forsake him, he'll forsake us. It's free will choice. It's not once saved, always saved. Or saved. It's if you want to continue to be saved, if you want to keep the faith. We're in this war with Satan. He can start to steal things. It's like King David. He starts out with a... If, a fervent love for God, he starts to lose it. And uh, God wants us to have that first love and keep that first love. And you do that through fighting off Satan's lies. 
That's what it's, that's the whole thing. It'd be very easy to love God with all your heart, your mind, soul, and strength if Satan wasn't around trying to stop you. But he is around. That's a suffering love test. Like Jesus in the wilderness. What do you love more, Jesus? The kingdoms of the world or God? That was the whole love test in the wilderness with Jesus. Jesus said, I love God more than all the kingdoms of the world. Satan, go away. I'm not bowing down and worshiping you. But most people do bow down and worship and follow Satan, like the religious leaders of Jesus' day. Their father was Satan. They wanted to do Satan's will and be liars and murderers, not lovers of God and lovers of others. And that's what we see in the world today. Like Jesus said, a few enter the kingdom of heaven. A few understand how much God loves them and tries to teach that other people to love God like they do. God's love school. So that's how we have to think of life. It's like a God's love school. God would like parents to train up their kids to learn to love God fervently with all their heart. Like the Bible says, your maker is your husband. Like the Bible says, as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so I rejoice over you, says the Lord. It's this kind of loving child with their father relationship, this kind of loving bride with their bridegroom experience. It says in the Bible, God delights in the presence of his people. God just wants to be with us. He just wants a relationship with us like Adam and Eve had before the fall. And it's available to us if we want to believe in this stuff. If we don't want to believe in this stuff, we miss out on this stuff. We don't want to believe God loves us. We don't feel loved. We don't believe God can save us. We don't get saved. And that's what it's about. God trying to teach us, God's love school, how much he loves us. We deciding with a free will choice whether we want to believe what God's saying to us or not. Did he send his son for us? Did he die on the cross for us? Or are we listening to Satan like Adam and Eve in the garden? Saying, that's not true. Don't believe that. Not about loving God and loving others and obeying the two greatest commands or something. It's about loving yourself. It's about making yourself a god or something. That's what saints tell these people. And they're believing it and they're following them. And they don't have much love for God. And they love the world more than they love God. And it damages human relationships, marriage relationships, parent-child relationships. So God's trying to teach us how much he loves us. He's trying to tell us, teach other people about his great love for them. Then if people can get a good loving relationship with God going, then they can start to be successful in life. We've got to think of life like a God's love school, and are we passing the tests? Are we learning this stuff from God, or are we failing? Are we listening at Satan's selfishness school or something, listening to him all the time? <laughs> it's all about you, it's all about money, it's all about sex, it's all about food, it's all about selfish pleasure. Satan's students or whatever. Instead of it's all about love, God's students. And that's going to be our safe haven if we go into these difficult tribulation times. It's having a good loving relationship with God that's our, the thing we need to prepare the most. We need to believe that there's nothing too difficult for our perfect father or perfect husband Jesus to do for us. He can feed us. He can clothe us. He can give us a trillion dollars right now if he wanted to. He owns everything. And he's all powerful. He could give us uh, food that never runs out. If the satanic government's trying to starve us or something. They try to poison us. It's like Paul with a snake on his head. It doesn't have to bother us. God can heal us of that. <laughs> you could drink poison. It won't harm you. Casting out demons. Healing the sick. What God tells me is... Um, He's trying to make us love teachers, and then when trouble hits in the future, try to teach people about God loves them even in suffering, and that God can help them through this trouble miraculously. It's like God says to me, when they're being punished, when they're sick and poor and dying, then it's time to do miracles, then it's time to preach and do miracles. Preach, get saved. Preach, seek God to help you through all this tribulation. Preach about heaven to come. And do miracles to wake some of these people up. It's like a rock star or something. You're doing these miracles and the people are watching you and they're saying, Hey, uh, 
There might be some reality to what he's saying. <laughs> Satan just keeps saying, God's not real. You don't need to get saved. God doesn't love you. But if they see some miracles and they hear somebody say, God does love you, <laughs> maybe they get the miracle of salvation when they're in tribulation times in the future. But I don't expect a great revival in the future. Jesus said, if you enter the kingdom of heaven. So, this is a bit of oh, God's love school. Some of the things God's teach me about love recently. I just seem to be like learning lots of great things from God right now. I'm trying to put them together like a truth puzzle so that they mean something to me and I can teach them to others. I got to try to seek a powerful, loving relationship with God myself and then try to teach others how to do it. That's the only thing that's going to be a safe haven in the days of Noah Part 2 government. Like Noah, through his love for God, could handle all that judgment on the wicked. Like Lot could handle seeing all that wickedness happening and judgment coming down on it. And we're going to have to see that stuff as God punishes the wicked in the future. But he's also trying to wake up his bride and wake people up to salvation, a few people or something, through it. So that's our safe haven, a good, loving relationship with God. And we develop that in our life by reading the Word, letting God spiritually teach us through it. I want you to love me with all of your heart. I want you to love other people like I love you. And I can help you to do it with the power of my Holy Spirit if you want to. Don't listen to Satan saying that's not your way to success or something. Ask God to show you, am I loving you with all my heart or not? Any wicked way in you, repent of it and start to let him help you to, to love him with all your heart. That's the only way you're going to be able to start doing it. Say, God, how much do you love me? Teach me how to love you back with all my heart. Give me the power to do it. And start up this awesome relationship with like a, a child and their loving father or a bride with their loving bridegroom that God wants us to have. Like a first love for Jesus, a hot kind of love that uh, doesn't go out because it's coming from the Holy Spirit into us. We're wanting to accept God's love and give God and give love to God back, which makes Him happy. When you make God happy, you make yourself happy, and you do that through so trying to obey the greatest command with His help too. So that's a bit about God's love school.